Hello there, my name is JD from Studio 2105. Welcome back to yet another episode of Weekly Update Wednesdays. If you are new to this channel, a warm welcome to you. Do become a subscriber, click on the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the notification bell as well so that you'll be updated every time I upload a brand new video. Sign up for the email list and if you want to support the channel financially, hit on down, become a patron via the website www.patreon.com slash studio2105. Just want to point out quickly on Monday, I recently just put out a video. It was a recording of a live Q&A session that I had with the students from the Ocean Institute of Audio Technology. This was on the topic of musicians and how to set up a home studio. So go ahead and check it out, right? Click on this link. It will take you to the whole live Q&A session. There's no featured question in this week's video. However, if you write songs and you make music for a living, this topic, right? is going to be really, really important and something that you should pay attention to. Uh, I do apologize, all right, um, for our non-Malaysian viewers. This subject may not be relevant to you because this is very specific towards what's happening in the Malaysian music industry. But however, if you want to find out more, if you want to um, learn a little bit more about how, you know, copyright works, how public performance, royalties, how licensing works, all right? Do check out, do stay tuned. Hopefully you can stick with me to the rest of the video to find out what this is all about. So here we go, right? The controversy surrounding the issue of performance royalties has once again reared its ugly head. Now in 2020, a little bit of a background, Music Rights Malaysia, or MRM for short, it's an organization. It was a one-stop collection agency for public performance licenses. It was surrounded by a lot of controversy, but finally in 2020 last year, it was dissolved. This meant that the role of licensing right, uh, reverted back to the original trio of uh, MECP, who represents uh, composers, lyricists, and publishers, PPM, uh, representing record companies and RPM, representing performers and musicians. Now, admittedly, okay, there's a lot of criticisms over the years over, you know, the uh, royalty payments and the um, licensing schemes and the tariffs and all that. And admittedly, the system wasn't perfect, but it works, okay, all right? And it's continuing to improve, especially in recent years with the aid of technology, and the most important point, despite whatever everyone else would say, this system of having, you know, these three different licensing bodies, MECP, PPM, and RPM, it accurately represents the various rights holders in the music industry. Who are these rights holders I'm talking about? I'm talking about songwriters, lyricists, your singers, musicians, producers, music publishers. Look, if you know anyone who works in, in, in this, you know many of them are ordinary middle to lower income folks, right? Just like you and me. Now, a few months ago, we caught wind uh, of a survey that was um, put out by my IPO, which is the uh, Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia. Um, this survey was put out with the aim of getting feedback, right? On the re-establishment of a one-stop Sharp, okay, to serve as a sole collective management organization, right, or CMO for short, right, or in other words, you know, a, a single licensing body. In other words, they want to go back to an MRM, basically MRM version 2.0. Local songwriter and producer Art Samad was the first to sound the alarm on social media, and I also followed up, you know, with a video on my channel, right, not too long ago, on why we should say no to another MRM. I had hoped that it would, you know, um, to be admittedly, I was very pessimistic, but I did hope that it would raise a little bit of awareness or at the very least, you know, you know, um, trigger some concern among the uh, stakeholders, right? And that many would go up and fill up the survey or at least right, go out and speak out on social media. But, you know, um, unfortunately, I think not many people paid attention to it and the whole uh, topic 
pretty much fell by the wayside, you know. Whether it's out of ignorance, you know, or perhaps, you know, maybe, you know, some of them feel like, you know, with things such as politics and all that, you know, it's going to, there is going to be just a pointless effort. You know, I, I don't know. I can't judge, nor can I assume, you know, the reasons for all of the inaction. Now, let's fast forward to just a couple of days ago. And I've learned, all right, that there were nine separate groups, right, that uh, represent a whole range of uh, different sectors from the hotel industry, shopping malls, retail sectors. And what these groups have done is that they have lobbied the government to re-establish a sole licensing body. In a letter to the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs and my IPO that was published in the newspapers recently, um, uh, these associations, right, the all nine of these associations stated, and I quote, a single entity is the only rational, efficient, and practical solution for us, the users of the end product of such works. Okay, end quote. Um, us here in the context, they're referring to the uh, various organizations and the associations. Like I've laid out the arguments against such a move in my previous videos again okay, right so i don't feel that i need to repeat them here right just go and watch the two other videos that i did you right click on it and then they'll take you to those videos now the main problem stems from a lack of understanding it's a, it's a failure of the general public to understand the principles that lie behind copyright and copyright law without going into super super technical details like Copyright basically exists in several forms. And in the context of music, right? Our number one, musical works. These are the, um, the melody and the lyrics. The sound recording, which is the actual master recording that, uh, that is um, uh, made and released. And number three, performers rights, right? This has got to do with singers and musicians. Now, these rights belong to, as I mentioned earlier, songwriters, right, publishers, the record companies, and the performers, respectively. Now, this is kind of going back to what I've said earlier and in my previous videos. There are three separate licensing bodies in Malaysia, MACP, PBM, and RPM. The reason why there are th these three separate licensing bodies is because they represent an entirely and a totally separate and different category of people, right, who are entitled, right, to their own set of rights in accordance with Malaysian law, okay, right, right, um, you know, we all talk about, you know, everyone's entitled, oh, we have our rights and this and that. Hey, these folks, right, have their rights too, and it's all enshrined in the, in the Malaysian law, okay. Now, let me give you a best example, right, you pay your utility bills every month, right, you pay your electricity bill, you pay your water bills, you pay your phone bills, you pay your uh, inner water bills. All these are separate bills because they are totally different types of um, services or utilities. All these different utility companies also have different tariffs simply because it's different, okay, right? Cost of your, of uh, maintaining and Interland and the data connection is different. The cost of having water, of course, is a lot cheaper. Electricity costs differently, right? You know, uh, in the water is different. Because these are all different resources. Sure, it would be nice and convenient, right, to have to only pay one single bill every month. But we know, all right, that there's no way that can be implemented in the efficient practical and rational manner, right? Just like what it was quoted in the in the letter. Lumping all the different, you know, music rights holders into one category is just basically naive. It's just being misinformed. Sometimes, you know, um, public and the people at large choose to view, you know, creatives, artists, musicians, and, and all that, you know, because they only see the celebrities, the famous celebrities, you know, they see the record, the record companies that, you know, make a lot of money, they're raking all the cash, you know, they live a um, fast and fancy life over there. But little do they know, right? I, they, you know, either they don't know or they turn a blind eye, or they just choose to ignore. There are so many other people, like right? songwriters, musicians, lyric writers, who are not famous, they never see the limelight, right? But they are there. There are so many, many more people out there. 
You know, I get it. I really do. You know, we're all suffering hardships, medical, economic, you know, emotional, psychological. You know, many have lost their loved ones in the middle of this this horrible tragedy that is that is the pandemic. Um, many have lost their jobs. They've lost the means to put food on the table. But I don't know. It's just a feeling. It's, why is it always? Right when it comes to you know all the various measures and you know cost cutting and whatsoever, in the end it's always the creative people, it's always artists, musicians that you know always you know get ignored. You know I, I get it right. You know many businesses have suffered losses. Right, hotels suffering losses. Hotels had to close. Shops and restaurants had to you know um, had to had to wind up. Have to close. Staff had been laid off, and a lot of people are going through a terrible time. Right? Again, it's, it's arguably the toughest time that we've had in living memory. But guess what? S so do these folks, right? In the music and in the creative sector. Why then is there this attempt to squeeze? songwriters, musicians, and performers to squeeze the money out of them, to squeeze all this income out of them. You know, again, once again, songwriters only make money through royalties. They don't, you know, they don't sell, you don't sell the song, right? And, and get money, okay, right? That's the only source of income if you are a songwriter. Look, um, if you really look at it, if their annual license fees, right, that you pay to MECP, PPM, and RPM, the one that they are complaining and that they're arguing about, look, this is just pennies, you know? It's a very, very tiny amount compared to your sales revenue, okay? Right? And if you're talking about your costs and your fees, why don't you ask, you know, your uh, landlords, why don't you ask your the mall owners to reduce or waive the rentals instead? There's so much, it costs so much more in your rentals, in your bills, and all your other expenses compared to license fees for public performance royalties, man. It's nothing. It's, it's like, you know, you're trying to save off a few cents, but then you still have your massive, huge expenses in, in other areas as well. Look, how many times, right, even before this whole pandemic and before this whole crisis, where musicians, where artists, where creatives have been asked to perform for next to nothing or be paid in exposure, you know? You know, how many times have we heard of creatives not being paid for their work or, you know, or not being paid on time? How much more do you want to squeeze every single penny of your budget from your production budgets? Do you sacrifice it from the creatives, um, from, from the creative people and the creative folks? just because you want to maximize your profits? Is it because this group of people, and I'm talking about, you know, artists and creatives, right? We are usually shy, introverted people. We are not very good at communicating. We're not, we're not very good at, you know, voicing out our complaints. We're not loud, brash people. We tend to let our art speak for itself. Is it because this group of people are the easiest to bully and pick on? If you look into the membership details, there are only a few thousand members, you know, represented by MECP, PPM, and uh, RPM. Okay, uh, represented by these like these three licensing bodies. Compared to right, all these other organizations, it's a, they are a giant consortium, right, across several sectors and different industries, and they want to fight their case. There's so many of them, and you know. Definitely, you're right. You know, this the, we as the silent minority, you know, the the minor the the minority. I'm talking about again. You're right. The 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 rights holders, songwriters, musicians, etc. And what they want to do is they want to pay lower license fees to these couple of thousand people that provide and do all these services and and create all these works of art. You know, I honestly think that it's crazy, right? It's crazy to go back to a system which has failed before, which did not work, which caused so much damage. Again, right, I've explained all this in the previous videos as well. You can read all about it, right, in various articles and news articles, okay? And as the saying goes, insanity is going back, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result every time, okay? Worse still, is the fact that the music industry was amongst the 
first to shut down because of the pandemic. Um, this was even before MCO, right? MCO was in March of 2020. We're talking about in January and February, even then, right? Uh, music was really being affected. Live events, concerts, right? Festivals and all that was already being shut down way earlier. And, uh, you know, judging by the Malaysian government's so-called recovery plan, the uh, music industry, right? Arts and creative, creative industry, it's going to be among the last to be allowed to reopen. The first to be totally shut down, right? Say, no work, you cannot work, you cannot make a living, right? And amongst the very last ones to be allowed to reopen. Um, what I've said in this video, right, comes from perspective of a working musician and a songwriter myself. You know, I'm not some rich celebrity or, you know, a record label boss or exec driving a fancy car and, you know, a big office and a, and a fancy house. And um, I do apologize, okay, if you know, offended or upset anyone with what I said in this video, okay. You know, I'm just passionate about, you know, music and all the people, right, all my fellow brothers and sisters who are involved in the creation of songs we love, right, who are, who are involved in the creation of art, who are in the creation of, you know, um, videos, graphics, and all of that, okay. Um, I don't want to see all of my fellow kindred folks here, right? Always, we always seem to be at the losing end of the deal. We always draw the short straw. I don't know why, okay? Again, could be because we are, you know, we are the easy pickings. We are the low-hanging fruit. So it's, it's easy for, you know, for whoever, government, authorities, right? And there's so many other issues that has, you know, always affected the music industry and arts and, and, and creatives in general, even before the whole pandemic thing. Look, unfortunately, music and, you know, art in general, right, especially during the past several decades has been increasingly, you know, it gets undervalued. It's underappreciated. Again, you know, I don't want to blame anyone for it. It's just a fact of how society views, right, the arts in general. Perhaps, you know, even maybe, maybe it's us. Maybe it's us that, that that's to blame. Maybe we've got to reflect inwards. Um, maybe we are the ones who have allowed our music and our art to be cheapened. You know, sometimes, you know, we choose to take the easy way out, you know, and profit sometimes or... Uh, um, overtake the value of the art itself. Maybe you know it's it's old. It's us. You know, maybe we brought this situation amongst ourselves. I don't know, right? This is just food for thought. Okay. And back to the issue of licensing bodies. I think it's important. It's very very important, right? We need to do more. We musicians, songwriters, creatives, along with all the licensing bodies, or along with MECP, PPM, and RPM, we need to do more to raise awareness on the topic of right copyrights copyright law licensing what what uh, um, public performance rights are we need to educate them we need to uh, you know explain why and you know help them to see the value in what we do you know when there's greater knowledge right and understanding you know, there's also a greater chance that you know we will make things better for everyone involved once we understand each other, you know, um, we understand each other, where we're coming from, we need to sit down opposite each other at, at, at the table, right? And sort this out and understand each other. I'm sure when there's greater knowledge, there's greater understanding, right? It is really, really will help to uh, make things and make uh, the whole world a better place for everyone that's involved. Lah. And once again, I do apologize, right, like for this long rant. If there are any facts or if there are any details that I may have left out, okay, uh, if you're watching this video, um, please, 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 if you have something to add to the discussion, albeit in a constructive manner, okay, I would love to hear from you in the comments, okay? Uh, if I said something wrong, if there are any inaccuracies in whatever statements, please, please do, um, you know, hit me up, okay, whether in social media or right, preferably, ideally, down in the comments below. Let's get the conversation going. Let's let's get everyone together, right? To sit around the table, right? To, to lep out together and let's talk it out and let's sort this issue out, okay? I mean, um, 
yesterday last night itself you know i've just stumbled across another issue it's a similar but related issue and this has got to do with you know um sabah and sarah but it's not going to be something i will talk about right until i learn more perhaps in another video in the future so that's it that's all i've got to say about about this topic about about this issue hopefully things are going to be sorted out right you know um i i put out my points and my arguments Right, on, on why we should not go back towards a single collection organization, right? Why it's bad for for the industry, okay? It's bad for the music industry. It's bad for every one of us. Uh, and of course, I, I have to speak. I have to look out for my folk, you see, my, my people, you know? But um, yeah, that's all I got to say, right? And um, if you found this video right my little rambling rant about this issue and this topic um somewhat informative useful maybe it helped maybe you know maybe you've never heard about this issue and this is the first time you're hearing about it right i do appreciate right did you even like all right uh down below again i would love to hear from you if you have comments to add right please do leave them down in the comments below just make sure always let's always be respectful and let's always be um, uh, civil in our discussion and our conversations okay do share this with your friends if you are a musician you are a songwriter please share this video with your friends okay right i'll leave all the uh links to the articles the various articles right down in the description below all the different sources okay um do do check it out and um uh, once again, if you uh, haven't subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate if you do click on the subscribe button, okay? Become a subscriber today. Um, hope to see you again in another video real, real soon. Um, once again, check out the live Q&A I did with the uh, students from the Ocean uh, Institute. Stay safe, stay happy and healthy. All right, peace, love, and music.